here's my first scuttler. So this is the first video of the series painting my turn at 28 miniatures. Um, we're going to be doing two scuttlers for this Feast of the Charybdis army, uh, or the Knights of the Charybdis as I'm calling them. Cover scheme wise I was struggling to choose what to go for. I've ended up deciding to go with a red and black theme because I want them to be quite sinister looking um, with some white and potentially some yellow in there. Um, for the scuttlers themselves I'm going to keep them very very like dark red browns um, inter integrating them quite a lot with the terrain so this um, ground and all this cork we're going to be muddying it out making it look all very muddy lots and lots of mud everywhere um, we're going to be using oil washes to really bring this to life to start the painting we're going to be going from the crab first and I'll build my way outwards so I'll be probably using an airbrush to paint the crab initially um, so spray over um, and then adding in some highlighting i'm not going to go too mad this is going to be a bit of a speed paint for me i usually do a lot of detail painting but i'm going to do a speed paint um, and then do some highlighting before weathering it uh, i would love to do some freehand pieces because i've added all of these like uh, plain shields which are allow me to do a lot of iconography and that sort of stuff um, as well as the banner design we're going to be doing a free-handed banner design and um, I do have some rough ideas I want to want to do for that um, but I'm probably going to consult some artwork and make a choice um, I do want to keep it simple because I'm gonna to have to try and recreate that banner twice uh, to three times uh, on the different crabs I've got three crabs to paint um, so don't want to do it too complicated so we don't have to replicate it um, but the crab's going to look particularly nasty um, so yeah we'll go from there especially on this guy he's got lots and lots of creepy stuff as well like I found a print for this so there's lots of 3d printed bits on this model the crab's printed the howder is printed this chap is printed uh, this poor guy who's been impaled and then all the additional stuff here um, the, the head with the body those are all printed as part of a the set then the rest of it is all fireforge games um, different bits and pieces that I've got and I've had over the years um, as well as the cork basing all right to start off the paint I'm going to be going with the carapace I've had a look at some different crabs and I've decided to go with a mud crab style color scheme so looking at a lot of crabs I'm decided to go with the very dark brown going into sort of a greenish murky mucky color um, and add some elements of red and then build those elements of red into maybe a natural looking orange towards the crab claws so look at a lot of pictures there's a lot of um, like an orangey color that starts to come through on the on the claws themselves potentially on some of the legs as well um, but we want to try and build in a little bit of a turnip vibe into this so I think this will lend itself well with a little little bit of a color change so to try that I'm going to be using these three colors and um, we'll do this first crab like this I and mean, if it comes out okay we'll do the second crab similar as well but slightly different carapace designs so I've got a rhinox hide here which is a very dark brown color I've then got p3's battle dress green which is this mottled sort of brown green that I'm sort of seeing and I quite like the idea of I'm going to add some corn red into the base color so we're going to be spraying over the battle dress green I'm going to start off with a two to one mix of the corn red and the rhinox hide um, and then see how that comes out
I always like to pre-mix my airbrush colors separately um, rather than put them in the hopper. And this is based on uh, some advice I got from Angel Geraldes, one of his videos, uh, which really inspired me to start airbrushing. Um, and it just helps you prevent getting clogs uh, in the airbrush. So I'm just gonna be spraying this all over the crab. Uh, doesn't matter if we get any of it anywhere else. This is a very watery consistency, so I'm just probably gonna need to do two coats of this. So that's after a first little blast. Um, there are still some areas that I've missed, um, but I've just run out of paint. I think I'm gonna mix a little bit more in my next mix, um, but I quite like the, the red brown tone. Um, I've kept it very thin because I want a little bit of the primer to be showing through, but we're gonna be doing two coats of this. Next, I'm going to take that battle dress green that I showed you earlier. It's just the P3 paint. It's that lovely sort of mottled green. And I'm going to be adding it in to my paint palette here that I'm using for mixing. And it'll just hopefully mix in with a little bit of the Rhinox hide. So it's not going to be pure battle dress green. And then we'll add some water. I'm just using water with all this. make sure that I might just grab a little bit of the brown just to help it mix in but if the layer is thin enough we can kind of control how much green goes down yeah I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of the uh, of the rhinox hide There we go. So it's not pure battle dress green. It's got a little bit of the rhinox uh, hide mixed in to get that brown element still in there. And we're just gonna add that straight into the airbrush. Okay, again, we've got quite a watery mix. And I'm just gonna start spraying this into the carapace. They control how much paint goes down. The belly pulling back on it at all now. Want some of this to fall on my legs. But mainly on the carapace.
All right, so next color that we've got running from the airbrush is going to be Griffhound Orange, straight Griffhound Orange. And we're going to be flicking this paint on the tips of all of the legs and onto the claws. As I'm aiming for a grim, dark, natural look, I'm going to be um, adding some more elements of that battle dress green in. Uh, I've just been looking at a few more pictures of mud crabs and decided to just bring back in that element. And to do so, I've got a bit, pretty big, thick brush here, and I'm going to just sort of stipple in um, so like dotting effects of this battle dress. So this is pure battle dress green right here. Um, you've got to remember that we are going to be slapping on a pretty thick. Um, oil wash over the top which is going to dull down a lot of this color so if i go in with this with it being pure um, it should still come through after the oil wash which is what we want ideally I just add a little bit of this to some of these barnacles as well just to keep that consistent green throughout. I have to use a smaller brush and get a better layer down but I'm still trying to just dot on um, just vary up the texture because nothing's going to be um, just trying to vary up the texture because nothing is going to be uh, consistent it all's got to be randomized like it's dirt and mottling Imagine something a crab getting to this side is going to be pretty damn old. Just to see how all of the colours look together, I'm going to actually paint the base coats for the mud uh, now to see how the crab looks and then hopefully that will help us tell how bright we want to go for the top of the miniature as well. So for this I'm going to be using some rhinoxide uh, as the principal colour and I'm going to be adding in a drop of black leather into that mix. I like to add a little element of purple. It will complement the yellows that we're going to be adding in 
it will complement this greenish yellow as well um, we could potentially use this to shade as well and it'll just add a nice depth uh, to this swampy mud we'll also add some greens as well uh, in the highlighting and some little pools but there is some like tufts and flora that we can uh, continue to add um, so there's a couple of mushrooms here for example a little swamp tuft there so we can uh, paint those in a, a lighter green but we need to see how it looks first so the base coat is dried on the base um, the mix of rhinoxide i ended up mixing more of the black leather in with the rhinoxide i wanted a little bit more of that purple to sort of come through and i feel like it looks quite good i really like how dark and rich that is obviously we're not dry brushing or anything like that at this stage um it was just literally to see how the crab looks compared to the mud around it um, we've not added any oil washing or the oil washing is going to be done at the end um, <clears throat> which will help tie everything together really nicely the whole model will get hit with an oil wash and um, so this you know these tones will get dulled down um, so yeah we'll go from there next up we're going to start doing the chaps on top and the howder itself so for the howder, I'm just going to pick a drab wood tone and then um, start working that in. Uh, so I'm just going to have a little look and make a choice. So for the howder, I want to go with more of a pale tone because the wood has likely been dead and dry for quite some time. So I'm just going to play around with some colours here. So I've added some uh, warm grey or heavy, sorry, heavy brown heavy brown from game color opaques and scale color brown gray the brown gray tone is adding like a neutral slightly purple tone and the heavy brown is great for coverage but it's like a light brown tone with a little bit of green in it um, so you can see we've got quite a pale um, bit of wood here and then once it's been weathered it will you know those lighter tones will come through and it'll help my, my, my thought process is to help break up how dark the, the crab is um, compared with the knights who are also going to be fairly dark tones you know dark metallics uh, and the like um, Maybe we'll go with some different tonalities of wood or the banner poles um, and things like this because I want I want this wood to look very rotted um, and, and manky uh, a bit like old plywood like old cheap plywood because you, you know some of the big big mahoganys oak you know the hardwoods likely wouldn't be around in the turnip times it's going to be like some really bad wood uh, it's all rotted
as I'm just playing around, I've just taken some Mournfang Brown, as I've seen how this has dried. It's very yellowy, very dappled. I'm just creating a little bit of a wash with Mournfang Brown. I'm literally just adding water um, to its a wash consistency in my mix. And we're just gonna add that across this wood um, and just try and add some more rotten looking browner elements in there um, a lot of wood rot starts going an orangey color as you've seen if you've been painting your fences or you've got old fences uh, yeah different types of mold and stuff a lot that goes like this orangey stuff in the uk that i've seen anyway um and we're just gonna apply that and see how it comes out so it's gonna add like some model variations to this old plywood look Okay, I've, I had an idea to basically change the tones of the rope to make them look like they've been dyed in blood. Um, so I'm going to start off with a pale uh, rope colour. I think I've got a, literally a colour called hemp uh, that I'll dig out for this one. Um, and then I'm going to hit it with uh, a corn red wash all over. Uh, to see where that sits to make it look like it's been sat in the gaps and it's starting to go red and then hopefully again that will provide a nice little divide between these colors uh, and building us up into these reds because we're going to be bringing more reds into the color scheme i've actually decided to go with a japanese uniform for these ropes because it's quite a strong uh, yellowish brown tone um, and then that should hopefully come through a little bit on the palette when I put this red wash over the top. Um, remember, everything will still be getting an oil wash at the end, so that will, everything will be darkened off even further. But this, uh, I think, will allow rope to punch a little bit of this yellow through once it's had a wash. Right, so let's get that wash on. Um, I've literally just grabbed some corn red air. This is a complete test, so if this goes horribly, then uh, we'll see what happens. There we go. Right, well, I'll just continue to water this down a little bit further. Like I say, I don't want this to be too dark because the oil wash will darken everything off even further.
here you go after we've added the corn red wash to the hemp rope um, it's still drying a little bit in places but um, I'm quite happy with how that looks at the minute it looks like it has been sort of dipped in it looks a bit like intestines that's kind of what we were going for um, so yeah that's good the wood is nice and pale and pasty I've just added a little bit more of that weird brown tone in there um, and I think that will really tie together nicely once the oil washes have gone down. Um, I might just go around and add a couple of little chip highlights uh, with a lighter um, wood tone um, just to sort of bring about that cheap wood like plywood look to it. Um, so we'll just go about doing that. So basically just add a little bit of sand yellow to that brown. Um, I'm just going to go and just add a couple of kind of scratches and chips uh, everything's very delicate on the model so I'm not really interested in doing any dry brushing at this stage The spears themselves, I wanted to keep them a different colour than the main like wood sections. Um, so I'm going to be painting those with German camo grey, uh, which is a very dark grey tone. Uh, as when it's hit with the oil wash, a little bit of that grey will still come through, um, but it'll be mainly black. And I'll probably start base coating some other areas with this tone as well. Having seen this colour dried, I'm actually going to take a little bit of Abaddon Black and I'm just going to add that in in a couple of areas. 
because I kind of like the idea of these spears and weapons looking like they've been dipped in ash um, as a means to dye them. So I've given it a bit of a mottled effect um, if they've used like the, the fire pit ashes to just get all of that wood in that tone. Right, so for the um, the clothing, I'm gonna go with a gory red tone from Game Color. I was debating doing it in the uh, corn air paint, the corn red, but I feel like it's too pale. Um, so I'm gonna go for this gory red, which is a bit more scarlet. Um, and then I'm gonna add some black stripes on each of the uniforms. So we start off with this gory red. It should still look quite bright because we've got a grey undercoat. So next I'm just going to start blocking in the metallics. So I've chosen to go with some pig iron, which is a P3 really dark metallic. I don't have a lot left of this, so I'm going to mix in a little bit of um, thrash metal from Scale 75's White, White Alchemy range. And this is like a slightly mid-tone, a little bit of brown uh, metallic. And this range is designed for mixing, so I'm hoping I can just bulk out what I've got of this pig iron. It's pig iron is basically darker than lead belcher. Um, we should hopefully have a nice mix of the two because like I say, it's gonna have this black brown oil wash over the top of it all. Um, so I just want to have a nice smooth-ish looking old iron. Um, I may just darken it off a little bit more as well. Let's have a little play and see what this looks like first.
which I am going to be rusting everything as well um, because you can't have this game and not have a little bit of rust going on.
All right, so we've just gone round and I've blocked in some colors. We've done the metallics. Um, I've blocked in some reds. I've decided to go with the red on top as well for the banner. Um, and then we're gonna add some black in there, some freehand patterns, some checkers. We all like a good checker if we're going for like a Blanchitsu style. Um, I was also thinking about doing something on some of the helmets. Um, so for example, this chap's helmet here is thinking about doing some uh, checker patterns um, potentially with some blacks. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, because we'll, we'll, it's quite a plain area here. Um, so I just wanted to potentially add some more interest to the model but i'll do that after i've done the rest of the freehand um because we might look at it and be like hmm, there's already a lot going on on the carapace doesn't need any more uh, just keep it quite simple all right so just added another little color of the red um i don't want a fully consistent tone of the red as a base coat because i want some of the other colors and tones to come through making it look all mottled and different um, i'm just going to go around now and just sort of tidy up some of these straps i'm going to paint the straps in black um, and then we're going to start doing some of the freehand and go from there i also want to add some rust um, to the metallics this is again before we're applying that overall wash uh, which is just going to help keep this as, as, as a quick paint.
So we've just added some stripes into the uniforms. I'm just trying to get a relatively even gap between the stripes. Um, so one of the chaps has got stripes all the way across, the other one's got stripes just on his sleeves. Um, and then I'm gonna basically start adding some details here as well. But I thought I'd just quickly, now that we've done that, is just base coat these um, turnip tufts with some Rhinox hide and just try and get some of that color into the turnip tuft um, so that I can then highlight it uh, and make it look a bit similar to tufts that we've got on the crab. And there we go with the little turnip addition there with the little bright yellowy root um, just adding a little bit of color splashing through um, right I think next steps are we'll just do a little bit of rusting to the metallics um, and then we'll do the freehand on the shields and then we're pretty much there uh, like I say this is a, a more of a speed paint from me um, and I'm quite enjoying myself so we'll keep cracking on so for the rust I'm just going to use uh, army painters dry rust um, I wish I had the fancy pants um, rust effects but the dry rust is okay from army painter it, you need to do a couple of coats sometimes um, or go quite heavy with the color um, because once it dries it sort of tends to disappear so um, I'll just start slapping this on and then you'll see once the first layer is sort of dried uh, how, how um, much more we'll need to add but you just add it in successive layers uh, and it'll come together basically I want all of the metallics to be very rusty on these guys um, so and I want this rust color to come through the oil wash as well Kind of like the idea of these guys being very rusty, creaky, 
Um, they, because they're the knights of the Charybdis, they're going to be wearing as much like bits of old armor as they have been managed to scrounge, or bits of armor that they've managed to fashion into decent looking plates. Um, as is their pride and joy. Um, but obviously they're not really able to keep it in good nick because uh, regularly oiling um, the armor will be difficult because oil is probably quite rare in the post-apocalyptic turnipy future. <laughs> so maybe they get a bit of uh, turnip oil or turnip juice and apply that um, which probably just increases the amount of uh, rusting. <laughs> Alright, we're going to let that dry. Um, and then see how it looks and probably just thicken up the rust a little bit more in a few places um, and I also feel like doing some checkers now so I'm going to while that dries I'm just going to start off on the, the black patterns now get my number two Rosemary Co Series 33 brush. This is my favorite detail brush at the minute. I've been using it quite a lot, to be honest, for different um, tasks. Uh, but today it's gonna to be used to get a nice neat line um, as and when we need it. So it holds a lot of paint and it has a very, very nice, neat tip. The Knights of the Charybdis really like their heraldry, so there's going to be quite a lot of different um, knight sort of Bretonian style heraldry going on uh, with different shapes and stuff on their uh, shields where I can. Um, I'm trying to get some straight lines, but getting a nice balance sometimes is a bit hard, so you can go back in two, so don't be scared to do straight lines, and you can come back in and correct them with the previous color but i tend to find like if you're going to do a line try to stay in the same direction um i just keep following it down same direction sorry so like holding the what i find with the lines if you um start in a direction try to maintain the same brush angle throughout uh, and that tends to help you keep the line looking steady. Um, but you can use things like tape and stuff like that if you prefer. On this side, if you can change your pattern, on this side I'm going to go entirely black. Because I wasn't really happy with how that line went. And you can just adjust it. So I'm not really happy with how this one's gone as well. But I think I'm going to persevere with this one. Thank you. 
So I'm going to come back in with the red and just try and tidy up. Uh, like I say, go back in two with your colours when you're trying to do little freehand symbols because you, know, you don't always have a steady hand, especially if you've been painting all day. So don't be afraid to go back in two and just correct what you've done. Okay, so seeing the um, rust effects dried, I'm just going to apply a little bit more in a few areas um, just to keep the effect going. Um, then once we've done the oil wash, I think I'll be coming back in with the metallic again and just sort of adding a couple of little chips and highlights and dints. Um, after that'll be post oil wash. So looking at the Feast of the Charybdis artwork, um, I do really like uh, what Max has done with the, the crab symbol. Um, so I'm probably going to try and have a little play with that because on this banner we've got a large surface here on this front side, this front edge, um, and he be able to duplicate it on this other side. Um, so I'm going to have a little go at doing a crab here and maybe have a sword um, being stabbed through the crab. Um, so do the crab in white uh, with maybe a bit of yellow and then um, the black sword coming through. Um, again, simple, simple drawing. Um, I'm using a scale 75 color called Mojave White. So this is an off white color. Um, it seems to have really nice coverage. Uh, it's more of an off white ivory. So we'll just see what we can do. Probably will keep, like, have the crab a little lower on the banner, um, so that I can fit the detail of the sword in. So something like we'll have crab claw here coming in, crab claw here coming in, and then the shell of the crab. Getting a rough outline i don't really mind if the consistency of the paint's not great at the minute usually with whites you need to do multiple uh, thin coats right so we're just going to establish this edge um start sharpening up these walls a little bit always the top side of the crab core is thicker there let's give you a little zoom in as well so you can see a bit better what I'm doing and then 
or the legs. I'm going to follow the, the, the Max style here. So it's just literally giving it lots of like turnipy leg fusions and flaring outwards. Thicken some of these up a little bit, it's a bit weird. This bottom one I'm going to definitely thicken up a little bit. Okay, so that's the start of the turnip crab. Um, we'll go with a couple of back and We'll go back in two with this a little bit. Um, I think I'll try and re-establish the, the red. I'm just going to go over with the second coat now, the white. Because this needs to look like it's been drawn on by the crew and not perfect, right? Another thing we could potentially do is just black line the outer edge of the grab. Um, I think this will really help with definition, but it's a risky man maneuver. Okay, so we've just highlighted the black um, around the crab. Um, and I'm just going to add another layer of the white. Uh, just start trying to smooth the symbol out a little bit further. Still a little bit blotchy places.
going to start doing some checker patterns just sort of following along with the artwork I'm not going to recreate the same pattern on the other side, I'm just going to keep it simple. Probably divide up, continue this patterning that I've gone for. Just some stripes. Thank you. 
there we go so we've just got a basic pattern and on the other side we've got the main pattern um, i'm going to add some more white to the flag so where it's got red checkers currently i am going to hit that with the white so just to introduce more white we're also going to add more white to some of the shields as well Uh, and while I wait for that to dry, we're just going to start doing a few bits on the shields as well. Thank you. 
I had to redo this grid. It's a tough one to do, but I'm trying my best and I've uh, had to just repaint over it and then outline it in the Doing it this way, I should be able to fix any mistakes. Definitely made a mistake on that one, but I have to just redraw that white line back in. I'm gonna like brace my hand as much as I can with the awkward shape of the crab. Part of me really wishes I'd painted this banner separately. time you challenge yourself with a bit of freehand like this it's just gonna make you better it's gonna make you be better at brush control and at freehand definitely more pleased with how this one looks um, it just needs some refinement now and that's just going to be like getting that white back out and just trying to correct where I've gone wrong now I'm going to get that Mojave white again the off-white nice cream white a really good coverage well I do have to come back for a application on the on the palette after each pass
All right, I think we're gonna leave it like that. So we've got the overall flag. Because once we've added other elements to it, like the washes, I think things will come back in line. I'll just try and tidy up the crab claw just a touch on this guy's shield. All right, we're just going to do the last little bits now, which is just these little tufts and mushrooms on the base. Um, and then we're going to hit it with the oil wash. So nearly up to the best bit. We're just going to use a camouflage green mixed in with a little bit of Vulcan green from Games Workshop. So it's oil wash time. I have a pre-made wash here. This is basically a brown, muddy black mix. So I've got Abtai Lung's Starship Filth, which is fantastic. And then I've mixed in a little bit of burnt umber just to add a little bit more brown to it. So here we go. Literally just gonna slap this on um, relatively heavily. It's quite thick currently so what I might do is I'm going to slap this onto the base and then I'm going to just add a little bit to the other areas and then start to pull it off Just added a drop more of the uh, thinner. I'm using a Windsor and Newton thinner. Just because I want this to flow a little bit better and be a little bit more wash like and consistent. I'm gonna get this all over the crab. Grime level must be absolute on these miniatures. I feel like my heart is in my mouth as I cover up all these details that we've just put onto the crab, but it will all be worth it when we do the removal later on. Now start slopping it all over here. all over this wood. Start getting it on the guys themselves. And 
I may have uh, added a bit too much. What? Of the thinner. But I think we're fine. Once I've let it dry for a bit, the longer you leave it to dry, the more it slowly integrates with your paint that's already down. So, in theory, we could let it dry for a bit, potentially even add another layer if we want to. See how that sits. This is the best bit though. Yeah, and everything nice is the this is a mud crab at the end of the day make sure all the spear tips are covered these themselves are covered really going quite heavy on the troops themselves get some on my dear flag Part of me is like, you should have primed, you should have hit this with a varnish first, Tom. But I'm like, no, it's okay. All part of the process. There we go. Don't want to miss an inch. Everything must be covered in the muck. Poor thing. All right, he's nice and gruesome and dirty, and he is going to be sat to dry. And we'll then start taking off some of this oil. I'll probably leave him about an hour, I would say, so that the oils have got a time to rest. Some of that. Um, some of the solvents have, uh, will have evaporated by then, leaving the oils how they are. We'll then look at it and think, right, do we need to add some more? Because um, I can add it in thicker places. And then we'll come in with a Q-tip and start removing it as we need to. So we'll be back and we'll start the cleanup process. And here we have the crab after a oil wash, which was left overnight. You can see that most of the oil has been deposited and the turps has dissolved and evaporated. Um, it's deposited a lot of the oils down. So now we've basically got to go and clean up. Um, you can remove the oils very quickly after leaving them. The reason I've left them so long is I really want them to embed and integrate with the colors underneath. So when we start removing them now, which I'm going to be doing with a Q-tip, a um, I've also got some airbrush cleaner if we get some stubborn bits. And I've also got these little dental sticks. So these are quite helpful. Um, they're a bit firmer, um, but they have a little bit of a soft edge to them. So this might help me get into some nitty gritty bits uh, when removing. I'm not going to remove a great deal. Um, for example, I'm just going to clean up this on the flag clean up some of the areas, remove some of the dirt off the crab, um, and then we'll basically start to do highlights. Um, I actually, looking at this now, it looks like I've completely missed the end of that spear, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> so uh, what I'll have to do is get some, uh, something like a strong tone acrylic wash, uh, from Army Paint to Strong Tone, I like that one. And I'll, I'll probably just whack that over there. It'll have a similar effect, um, but it just won't integrate and it might have like tide lines. Notice that you don't really get tide lines with oil washes. So let's get cracking. I'm just gonna roll my Q-tip. Uh, I'm gonna have one end that's gonna be wet, one end that's gonna be dry. There's gonna be a lot of fluff that comes off this. So just dip that into that big wadge there and then use the clean bit to pull it off. It's quite satisfying doing this, to be honest. I like having the shield super dirty. Um, 
Might just remove like a little bit here and there. Just to make it look like it's, uh, they've attempted to remove some of the dirt off it. And just so we're unobscuring the little bits of freehand that we've done. Just so that they come through. I want them to look dirty and gritty and old and used and all of that jazz. That's part of the process. It's the entire reason we're using the oils, to be honest. Um, the barrel, however, that does need a little bit of a clean up. Look at that. It's covered in, covered in muck. But the banner wouldn't get that mucky, would it? Because it's flying high. Um, unless, of course, the crab does bury itself underground. So I'm guessing, like, they've got to deal with that somehow. Um, maybe furl the banner like a sail. Now, the only problem with using Q-tips, of course, as you're seeing, is that all this fluff starts coming off him. So make sure you've wet your whistle because you're going to need to blow a lot of this fluff away. Uh, coming in onto the crab itself now, I'm going to leave most of the the oils just deposited into all of these crevices on the turnip, uh, on the <laughs> turnip crab. Um, I'm just going to remove some of it from the highlight points, um, so the exterior. These like spiky bits on the carapace. Um, some of the more raised areas. I didn't go, because it was an oil wash, the wash kind of didn't sit onto the spiky bits anyway. So, but like, see here, just removing this, just allowing that to come through a bit nicer. Some of that orangey colour. Like where where you've spent a bit of time, a little big bit of fluff there, where you've spent a bit of time on the model, just try and clean that bit up particularly. If you've done some texturing or really proud of a little bit of paintwork that you've done, there's no, there's no harm in removing extra oil. It's still going to look dirty and grotty, but you still want to showcase what you've done underneath, right? And that's what we're just doing going round. This is this is this proud claw, that's a strong hand. This claw's meant for munching. So on the actual guys, like all I want to do is sort of remove any large clumpings of the oil. Um, like I did it before here. This is where I'm actually going to get this little uh, dental stick thing because I can't really get underneath there with a Q-tip. So I'm just going to get in with this and just try and remove a little bit of that. Scratch it up a little, a little bit. I do really like this red. I'm happy with uh, going with this carmine sort of scarlet red, which is the corn red mixed with the uh, game color gory red. Um, it's looking quite nice. It's coming through, um, especially when we're looking at all of this oils. It still shows its color quite nicely. Um, I'm happy with the metals as well because like the browning that's happened is bang on what we want for turnip, right? I've slapped a load of the rusts down and then we've got this oil wash all over and we've still got a little bit of shine coming through. So that's probably what I'll do is uh, just try and scratch away a little bit of that oil on a couple of the surfaces. I'm also thinking about take, getting out my AK Interactive uh, weathering pencils. Um, they're really good fun. Um, so I might just use that a little bit before we finish this tutorial, just so you can see what they do. Um, they are really cool little pieces of, uh, of kit. Highly recommend getting them for, particularly for like scale modeling, you know, doing your tanks and, and whatnot. Excellent for like chipping and, and all of that jazz. You can do streaks with them as well. Or like nice orange coming through in the carapace. It's looking nice and natural. Um, I'm really happy that we... I was worried that the greens wouldn't come through. Right? 
Because we added all that battle dress green and stuff like that in a few of the areas. And thankfully it looks like it's, it's come out nicely. got some on this wood here i'm kind of just going to leave all of that on the wood i don't really think i need to remove any because it's going to get grotty and grimy that pale wood tone that we went for is really tying in nicely if we were we were to go for a more you know standard wood color i don't think that would have been visible through the oil wash you know i might just come in a little bit and maybe catch some edges with this but Right, one thing that I did forget to do was uh, reattach Mr. Spike to so the chap that was uh, hanging here, spiked out. However, I did paint him separately. And we also gave him a little oil wash. Um, I wanted to keep him very, very, very pale. Oh, blue tag. Uh, what I was kind of going for with this is, um, see all these little white things coming out of the corpse i was thinking that they were like little strands of the root kind of like how mushroom mycelia uh and like slime mold sort of like grow and attach themselves to things um i was thinking maybe it was growing up through uh, over this bit of wood or whatever it is um the other thing of note is uh once we got rid of this blue tack um i did a pale flesh and then just took a little bit of a black wash and just added it to the feet and the hands um, in a few places because it just sort of adds a little bit of that drained corpse. Uh, it's been sat there putrescently being gnawed on by the, by the root. Um, so I'm going to reattach it. And then our crab will basically be complete. All, all that would be needed to do now is any further tufts and grass tufts that you'd like to add. Um, I actually am thinking about doing some pour resin. Um, so just adding a little bit of pour resin. But for now, I'm going to leave this one as is. I think some of my other models in the in the army, I'm going to add some pour resin to. All right. Well, we've got a little turnip over here as well. He's happy as Larry. Um, I'm I'm happy with how this is looking. Kind of like in my mind this is what i wanted to see um the last thing to do is just to do that little bit of uh, a strong tone wash um, and then i will matte varnish him so because you need to seal all this in it looks like the oil does need a little bit more time to dry on the surface of the crab so i'll probably leave this a little bit longer for some of these uh, terps to leave the surface of the crab here um, and before I seal it in with a with a varnish, uh, but I will be using a matte varnish, um, and I'll just rim the base, and then we're done and dusted. Stay tuned for uh, a completed spin. We're not done yet. I'm actually going to do a little bit of uh, chipping weathering with the AK Interactive pencils, and I actually found some UHU glue in one of my drawers. So I'm actually going to try that out. Um, we're going to have some fun with it. So what I'll do is I'll just come round all these edges with these uh, weathering pencils. Now these are uh, acrylic pencils. So they're really handy for just edge highlighting. I could do this with a brush, not a problem. Uh, I just wanted to get these out and uh, give, take them for a spin. They're really quite cool because you can um, use the water to literally, if you're not happy with any of your work, you can just grab a little bit of uh, water and it just rubs off really really easily um so you do need to seal this in with the varnish afterwards and plus you don't really get any of the sort of if you're not great at edge highlighting and you're not confident you can get a neat line these might be better for you because uh you can really catch edges with them and just pop things out that uh, potentially you wouldn't have been able to before so we could also do scratches like that very easily so we'll just go around some of the armor panels and pieces
yeah, I would say you have to be a little bit careful because obviously if you're applying quite a bit of pressure to the model, you might snap stuff off. So just be gentle um, and be careful because uh, if you're like trying to rush through this, you know, you're probably going to do more damage than you've done good. Um, especially with kit bashed stuff that uh, is super glued down. You know, super glue isn't always the best um, with like resin particularly. It's quite brittle. So uh, just be careful. Maybe you just add a couple of little slashes like that. These are kind of the veterans of my army that uh, get to ride the skulls, so makes sense for them to be the chaps. With a bit more beaten up battle damage on their armor. Just add a little touch of it on the backs of the helmets, maybe. Be very careful. I've glued. Uh, the corpse, Mr. Stakey. Um, maybe these guys talk to it, who knows? Um, <laughs> it has got root growing through it, so why not? Um, the other last thing to do, I've just got a brown pencil. So this is a brown weathering pencil or chipping color, right? So let's just have a little bit of fun with this and maybe just add a couple of, if it's gonna work, you may need to a knife to it actually first because I use some water. So the water very quickly removes the edge. still quite a little bit of uh, oil as well on the flag now that I see that dry so I might just try and take a little bit more oil off this there we go I want the color to pop a little bit more have it our lovely turnip crab in all of his wonderful dirty glory and his two crewmen well three crewmen if we include mr stakey and um, we've got the free hand on the two shields we've got the free hand on the banner and we just generally i've had a lot of fun painting this model it's been such a nice break from painstakingly painting up display miniatures to just having fun dirtying things up and trying to paint things quickly and effectively um you know i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i've done and if you learned anything from this video please let me know in the comments below i really do appreciate it and if you want to support the channel moving forward i'm planning to make a lot more tournament content with my army and potentially going to start another army after this with a squid cult theme but i'm going to hopefully get you guys to vote on how we kit bash and paint that army so stay tuned enjoy the crabs um, we have a second crab as well and if you want to check out the other live stream video where we painted a smaller crab you can do so all right catch you next time